Our peacock legs are super simple. They are just an, a tube with one end open and one end closed. You're going to start with the closed end by making two chains and then SCing eight into the second chain. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's our eight SCs. I'm going to pull that tight. Since we're working in continuous rounds, we're just going to work a stitch right into that first stitch. And we're going to work a stitch in each stitch around, which is single crochet evenly, for seven rounds. So rounds two through eight are simply um, eight SCs around. So there's round two. We're going to kind of push that out so that the outside is the side of the leg that's showing um, while we're working. Three, four, five, six, six, seven, and eight. Now this one we can do our regular slip stitch bind off. And give ourselves a long tail. And you'll have a nice opening with eight stitches and a closed opening or a closed end that is where we're going to attach our foot. So to make our feet we need to make two of these little loose toes that are just bound off and you can either leave the tail and tuck it in to here or you can weave in your ends pretty however you want to do it. Um, I like to just kind of leave my tail and then I tuck it in before I put them all together. But we're going to make two of these. So here's one and I'm going to make the second one with you. To make our second loose toe we're going to chain two. Then we're going to work six SC's into the second chain from the hook. Three, four, five, and six. So there's our six SCs. Give that a nice tight pull. And all that our toe is, is going to be five more rounds. So two through six are going to be worked just even SCs. So six SCs per round, all the way around. So there's three, four, five, six. And what I like to do as that middle kind of starts to open up, before your second round is done, tie a little knot in here. And if you put your finger down on your work when you pull the knot tight, it will keep the knot right next to your work and keep it from pulling out. And six. So we have five rounds even with our toe closed at the bottom. And then to close this off, instead of doing my usual slip stitch, I want to make sure that this stitch is still something I can work into. Um, so I'm just going to do a chain basically and then pull that tight so it makes a knot. And then when I cut my yarn, and this doesn't need to be long because we're not going to weave it in or weave it in, we're just going to tuck it in. And we can cut that middle piece short because we tied it off on the inside. So we can tuck that in so it's nice and out of the way. And then we will tuck the other ends also, this end also. And so here's our two toes that we're going to start out with and then we need to make a third toe in order to put them all together. So make one more toe and before you bind off stop and we will put them all together. Alrighty so we have our three toes and our third toe we've left our yarn attached to the ball because we're going to need 
this yarn in order to attach all three and make the rest of our foot. So what we're going to do is I've tucked the tails on here so you can see I have six stitches to work on working around. So without breaking my yarn, I'm going to do three SCs onto what we're going to call the first loose toe. Okay, so now our starting toe and our first loose toe are kind of attached. Then on our second loose toe, we're going to work six SCs, which will be all the way around the second loose toe, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to go back to the three stitches we haven't worked yet on the first loose toe. So we're going to work one, two, and three stitches on the first loose toe. So you can see now we've got all three of these attached together. And then we need to work six stitches on our starting toe. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we have 18 stitches in a round and we've attached our three toes together. We've worked on all six stitches on each toe by going three, let me get my hook out of here, three, six, three, and then six. So we've worked on all six stitches on all three toes and now we have 18 stitches. So the first thing we need to do to get our foot finished is stuff these toes because now we're going to do decrease rounds on here and this hole's going to do nothing but get smaller. This is the tiniest piece to work with on this project. So you're going to want to take your stuffing and, and if you buy polyfill stuffing they all come with this little dowel and you're going to need to use that dowel to get that stuffing in there. And with these feet especially, because the top half of the peacock weighs so much, because of the tail and the head and the thick wings, you're going to want these feet to be super tightly stuffed so that they can hold the weight of everything and not get smooshed. They're going to be your steady base. your firm foundation, if you will. So it's very important that you stuff these toes super tight and full of polyfill stuffing. All right, so we've got our toes firmly stuffed. Can get rid of our dowel here. And now we're gonna do two decrease rounds. And the first one is going to be an SC and then decrease and we're going to do that six times. So we're going to SC and we're going to use invisible decreases. Decrease. SC. My dowel's getting in the way over there. Decrease. And one more time. SC. and decrease. So we're closing up those toes. Now we have 12 stitches on top here and we need to do one more round because our last toe needs to be the same size as these three toes. So we need to do one more round of decreases to get that last toe down to the same six stitches around that the other ones are. So we'll do six decreases. So one, and this part gets a little tricky to see your stitches, so make sure you're kind of pulling your work open so you can see where all your stitches are every time. That was two decreases. That's 
three decreases, four decreases, five decreases, and your last decrease right here, whoops, and right there, whoopsie doodle, six decreases. So now you can see we're back to having a circle of six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this is another good place to add a little stuffing to your foot if you want to. Um, for the sake of being able to see these circles easier, I'm not going to stuff it right now. I'm going to stuff it when this other toe is done. So for this last set of rounds, for this last toe, uh, we need to make it five stitches long as well. So for five rounds, we're going to work even SCs. Five. And six. So now we can take this and we can cut our tail. Now this one we are going to want to be pretty long. So we are going to use this tail. So next we need to stuff our foot just like we stuffed the other toes. Alright, so then we're going to close up our foot. And what I like to do is thread through the front loops. And I go through all six loops, so that's two, three, four, five, and six. And then you give it a good pull, and it pinches it closed in a nice closed circle that looks a lot like our closed circles on the other ends. So that's why I like doing it that way. I'm going to tie a small knot and then I'm going to thread this tail down through the bottom of this toe and it's going to come out right here, right at that last decrease round before we started our toe. So right there, okay? And we're going to pull that out and what we the reason we're going to use that is because when we put our foot together finally, we're going to attach it smack in the middle of our toes here so that our leg stays nice and centered and this makes that nice balanced base. But we're going to use this tail to attach this end of the leg to our foot. So when you pull it out right here, that just makes this tail a lot easier to use. Gives you one less piece of yarn to keep track of. So go ahead and make yourself another one of these feet and we will keep going. So we made our foot and the end of our leg and we threaded our tail from our foot through the middle of our foot here. And we're gonna use that tail to attach the foot, but we're going to attach it on this end so that the open end is what we can attach to our body. So in order to do that, we need to thread the tail from the foot into our needle. So with our tail from our foot threaded into our needle, we're going to go up and what we're going to do is skip this round here, the first round, and we're going to work in every stitch around the second round that has eight stitches on our foot. And what that's going to do is really drive the base of this foot or base of this leg into the foot so that it has good strong support. So you're going to go back down through the stitch you started and up through the next, then up through the next stitch of the leg. So 
see how that's going so we don't want to work right into the end here we want to work into the stitches on that second round so we've got that attached you're going to want to bind it off so bind it off and then weave this end in back and forth onto the leg somewhere and then you can cut this tail the tail that we're going to attach the leg to the body is the tail that is left at the top of the leg. So you'll have two feet and they will look something like this. We are all ready to attach our feet to our body. We've attached our legs real firmly and then I stuffed them real firmly as well. And then we pinned onto the body where we want the legs to go. Now this is where our beak's going to be, so this is the front of our peacock. And we wanted to pin the light legs in line with what would be his shoulder here. Because that's where the brunt, the center point of the weight's going to be. Because his head will tip forward and his tail will tip back. So this is the tipping point right here. So we want his legs directly under that. Where that ends up being is rounds 44 and 42. So here's the last round of our body in the center here. If you count up five rows, you get to 44, and then another two rows, you get to 42. And this is usually about five stitches apart, but I want you to pin them and think about this more that you want these far enough apart that their toes touch in the middle. Any farther apart than that and they're going to be too far and any closer than that and the base will be too narrow. So I went ahead and pinned these out because each of our legs is eight stitches around. We can go two, 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 and two in a square. And I got those all pinned out and ready for us. And I'm going to go ahead and attach one and then I will let you attach the other. So we threaded the needle with our leg. And because of where the needle's going to come out, I want to make sure that my two stitches, my two front stitches, are these two. So I'm going to make sure that I start in a place that puts my stitch where I want it to be. So I'm going to start it halfway between these two pins so that that stitch is in the right place. So there's my starting stitch. I'm going to pull that pin now since I've reached it and I'm going to go around this way since we want our toes facing forward obviously. So I'll go around to the back here, go up through our leg, let's try to get this close here, up through the leg, down through the stitch we just came out of and straight towards our next pin. Again, up through the next stitch of the leg, down through the stitch we just came out of, and up through our next pin. Alright, make sure you're tightening as you go. These guys are going to need to be real tight. So we're going to come up through the next stitch, down through the stitch we just came out of, and straight toward our pin. through the next stitch, down through the stitch we just came out of, and up out of our pin. Pull that tight. Up through the next stitch, down through the stitch we just came out of, over one. Up through the next stitch, down through the stitch we just came out of, over to our pin, pull that nice and tight, okay, up through the next stitch, down through the stitch we just came out of, and back to our starting stitch, and then we go up through the last stitch of the leg, and back down through the stitch we just came out of, and backwards one and pull that real tight. So we want this to be a really nice tight attachment. So 
so that he can stand on these legs firmly. Okay. Weave in this end and repeat it with your other foot. And like I said, they should touch right here in the middle. And then our peacock will be able to stand. Now, he will not be able to stand up on his own yet. So don't panic if he falls flat on his face the first time you stand him up. That's okay. His head weighs a lot right now, and his the weight of his tail is going to balance him out. So don't worry if he falls over. He won't fall over once we get all of his tail and his head on together. Our peacock beak is super easy and super fast to throw together. We're going to chain two with our gray and work six SCs in the second chain from the hook. Three, four, five, and six. There's our six SCs. Pull that tight. And this one we are gonna want to tie off on this side because we need this beak to be able to come to a point and if we stuff it and there's a hole in the end then it's gonna be hard to do that. So we tie a knot, put our finger on it and pull tight. And since we're working in continuous rounds, we're just gonna work straight into that first stitch and work six SCs around. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then round three is three increases, so we're going to do an SC. One SC and then an increase. Then one SC and then an increase. Then one SC and an increase. And that brings us to nine stitches. We're starting to get point. We're going to SC evenly around for one round. So nine stitches. Two, three, four, five, oops, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then we're going to do another round of increases, this time two SCs and an increase. So two SCs and an increase. And two SCs, one, two, and an increase. Two SCs and an increase. All right, so now we have 12 stitches in our round. We're going to do one round even of 12. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and then one more increase round, this time with three SEs and then an increase. So there's three SEs and an increase. Then three SEs and an increase. Then three SEs. and an increase. And that's all there is to it. That's all that our peacock beak is going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my usual slip stitch in the next stitch and pull tight to bind off. 
cut that off and set this aside for when we're ready to attach it to the head. Alrighty, so it's time to attach our beak to our head. Um, our beak is nice and stuffed now, not too tight because we are going to squish it together. It is 15 stitches around and conveniently round 16 of our head is also 15 stitches around. So I went in and I marked pins around round 15, around 16, marking all 15 stitches. That way we can use the pins as the guide and keep this nice and even, just working it one stitch at a time. So we're going to go in through the first pin and up through the next. And we're going to attach this just like we attach anything else. Up through the beak. Down through the stitch we just came out of and up through the next one. Up through the beak. Spin this around down through the stitch we just came out of and up through the next one. Alrighty, we're almost back to our starting point. Okay. Then and there is our nice evenly attached beak. So we just have to weave in these ends and then we'll add some nostrils to it. To put nostrils in, it makes it sound more complicated than it is in the instructions, but it's actually quite simple. You're gonna put a stitch even with the eye by pulling your yarn through and then going back through the first hole that you came out of and then going straight across so you're even with the other eye. And making one stitch there. Then you go back out one of the holes that you already made. And you've just kind of made two nostrils working back and forth. And then you just pull until they're tight enough that they cause a little pinch a little pinch. Easy peasy, right? Okay, this next part we're going to put our two strands of yarn on top of our peacock's head where they have that neat little crest. You're going to start at the row directly behind where their eyes are and insert your hook. Then take your piece of yarn and fold it in half and put the loop over your hook and pull it through the stitch. Oops, I've got some stuffing. <laughs> Pull the loop through the stitch. Then wrap your yarn around the hook, both sides, both pieces, and pull it through the loop you just created. Pull that super tight so that it stays straight and isn't all floppy. So do it again. Fold our piece of yarn in half. Insert the hook through the stitch. Put the loop over the hook and pull through. Wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through. And then pull tight. Typically, peacocks have three little fuzzies. Our peacocks have four. Cut them all off straight. And then you're just going to fan them out like so whenever he is ready to pose. Pretty cool, huh? So since we're working on the white body, I'm going to do our eye contrasting stripes in blue instead of white because you wouldn't be able to see them in white. And they're super simple. A lot like the nostrils, you're just going to start in line with the eye here and thread your yarn through till you get to two rows behind the eye, straight behind it. Leave yourself enough tail to bind off and you're going to go just over the eye and you're not going to attach it or anything above the eye. You're just going to leave it there and go back in through that same hole you just did and back out through the same hole 
on the other side and pull. And if you pull too tight, you're going to end up with a crimp here and this is going to flop around a lot. So you want it you want it tight enough that this doesn't flop, but loose enough that it doesn't squeeze your face. All right? And then you're going to go under the eye and do the same thing again. So in through that same hole and back out through the same one again. And it's going to be on the bottom this time. See how that works? Then your last stitch, if you will, is going to just be down on the bottom again. You're going to go back in through that same hole and then come out pretty much any other hole so that you can do your bind off. Make sure you pull it tight enough that it's not going to flop around, but not too tight so that it doesn't cause a problem. So our tail feathers consist of four colors, the peacock blue, the turquoise blue, the warm brown, and the lettuce colored red heart with love. Um, to start out, we're going to start out with our peacock blue, and we're going to chain four. I'll move those a little farther out of the way there. And then we're going to work nine DCs into that first chain. This is a little hard to see with this dark color, but one, two, three, eight, and nine. So we have our nine DCs, and with our chain three at the top, that counts as ten all the way around. I'm going to pull this tight, but I'm not going to tie it off just yet, because the next thing we need to do is change colors, and we're going to change to our turquoise. Now, I'm doing color changes drastically differently for this than I do for a typical project, and that's because I really, really want a very sharp color change. I don't want any risk of this overflowing. So as a result, I'm going to do this as a slip stitch color change instead of my usual color change. With that, I'm going to do two DCs into the middle and I am holding my tails underneath so that I wrap my work around the tails. And what this is going to do is prevent me from having to weave them in later. So with our last two DCs done in the different color, we're going to have this nice little V of color that peeks up into the dark blue. Isn't that cool? With the rest of the stitches, either single crochets or loop stitches, we don't have to slip stitch into this chain one. We can work it as a continuous round like we work on our other things. So I'm going to do two SCs in the top of the chain one and it's just going to keep up our continuousness. And we're going to do two SCs in the next nine stitches or in the next, um, in all of the dark blue up to the last, up to the first light blue DC. So after we've gone all the way around the blue, we're going to do an increase in that first light blue stitch and do our crazy slip stitch color change again to brown and holding the tails behind me so that I don't have to weave them in later I will s I will do an increase over the top of those two stitches in the last stitch of that round so you see how that's working so far now with the brown I'm going to work one SC and then an increase and I'm going to work in that pattern all the way around. So one SC and then an increase. One SC and then an increase. And I've probably worked long enough that I can drop those tails now. One SC 
and then an increase. All right, we have our last increase and it's right before our first stitch of brown. Now, if you'll notice, that first stitch of brown is in perfect alignment with the center line of our feather. So, for all of the feathers with a tail, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch and then chain however many the tail tells you to chain. So, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and chain 15 and do a short tail. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Tie this off so that you still have that fifteenth stitch. And we've cut our brown and we have a tail that's fifteen chains long attached to the circle of our feather. So now we have our feather with its 15 chains um, attached to it and we've cut that off and we've cut off our tails of our blue so they're not in our way and next we're going to do a loop stitch join in order to attach this to the chain and all that that means is that our first our join is also going to be our first stitch. So all you do to do that is to you put your loop on the hook already your slip knot, insert it through the hole that you're going to be working on. So in this, in this case, we're going to be working in the first chain and then complete your loop stitch. And a loop stitch goes around your finger like this and you're gonna go over this one and behind this one and cut, you'll come up with just one loop, pull that through the stitch and then just finish your SC with that loop still on your finger, and you pull it out. And that's how you do an SC join. Now here's just your standard SC. Insert your hook around your finger, go over and then under, pull through, and finish your SC. Okay. Insert your hook, go over, under, Pull through and finish your SC. Over, under, pull through, finish that SC. And that, there's also a more detailed tutorial of this on the blog that doesn't have a feather flopping around in the background and it isn't done on chains so it's a little bit easier to see. But what we're gonna do is loop stitch, keep loop stitching all the way down the chain. All right, and we've gone all the way down one side of our chain. It's perfectly normal for this to curl at this point. It will uncurl when you put them on the other side. So don't stress if yours is curling. Then we're going to just loop stitch all the way around the outside of our feather, one, one loop stitch in each stitch. All right, so you've loop stitched all the way around your circle and down your first, the first side of your chain all the way around and you've come back to the other side of your chain and here you can see where the chains crisscross over. And what you're gonna do is work in the back side of those chains and just do your loop stitch like you've done it this whole way around. And then do it in the back of the next chain. And you can find them pretty easily too by looking directly opposite your old stitch from the other side. So here's the next one right here. And you're gonna go all the way back up the chain just like that. 
And then that very last chain Huzzah! Now, all we have to do is slip stitch into our first stitch to make it a loop and bind off with a bit of a tail. Don't need a super long tail, but a decent tail. And there you have it. There you have your feather with its tail. The back looks a little messy. You're going to want to weave in these ends just so they don't come out. But if you worked over the top of them, like what I was doing, you can probably get away with just cutting these off right at the base of the work. I won't tell anybody, I promise. So make the rest of your feathers and we will get this peacock put together. Attaching our tail feathers to our peacock, we're going to do them all one at a time so that they all flow and flounce. At the end, once all of our tails are attached, we're going to take the tails that are the same length and just attach them on the corners here so that they don't flip themselves over, but we will get to that in a minute. To attach your tail, you want it facing up, so with the stitches, the top stitches of your loop stitches showing, and you should have woven in all of your ends except for your last long tail. So to find the right place to put our tail, we need to find round 38. And the round 38 is going to be the third round up from our decreases. So here's our first decrease round. We're going to go up one, two, and three. And then we need to try to find sort of the middle of our peacock, and that's right here. Now we're going to be working in the two stitches on the end. So let's go ahead and put our hook, our yarn through one of those. Make sure your feather is has its stitches facing up and come up through the, the feather. Then we're going to go down the stitch we just came out of and over one and come back up. So, and come back up through our tail again. This is going to give our tail a nice two stitch anchor here. Then we just need to bind this off. And I'm going to do that by tying a knot and then threading my needle through the, these stitches of my tail here. All right, so this is how all of our tail feathers are going to attach with this two stitch method. For our next size feather, our large feather, we need to place two of them. So we're going to place them e equally on either side. So we need to count three stitches over from this center line. One, two, three, right there. And one, two, three, right there. Okay, so we're not going to use this pin anymore because we only have two feathers to attach. And we're going to attach our two feathers to those pin pinned stitches just like we did the other ones. So we'll go up through the stitch next to it and come out through our pin since we need to do two stitches. Making sure our tail is facing up. Come up through our tail. Go back down through the one we just came out of and over one. And pull tight. And then come back up through our tail one more time. Okay, and leave this end to weave in. Then our next set of feathers, we have three feathers. So we're going to go up three rows from these feathers, one, two, three, and find our center point because we are going to put a feather there. And then over, one, two, three, and over, one, two, three. So again, same thing, start at your pin and go over one, 
come up through our tail. Down through the stitch we were just in and over one. And then up through the tail again. All right, so you have your three medium feathers attached like this. And our ends woven in. And we're going to attach our two short feathers. So one, two, three. And these are going to go between the three feathers. So here and here, like so. So same exact thing. You're just going to sew in two stitches, making sure your feather is facing up and you're coming up through the feather when you work. So attach those two feathers, and then all we'll have left is the top feather. The last feather is going to go three stitches above this row of feathers. So one, two, three, and our pin needs to go right there. And this one doesn't have a tail on it at all, it's just a round feather. So we're going to still attach it exactly the same way going to go in through here then we're going to come up and we're just going to come up in the same point that our yarn came from and over one and I'm going to dodge those loop stitches and then sew up through the feather like so now you just bind off on this feather and then i'll show you how to attach them together so they all lay nice so when i came up for the with the crazy idea for this tail i knew i wanted individual feathers and not just one solid piece but i also knew I would want them to lay a certain way as often as possible while still having a little bit of floaty motion. So what I decided to do was to tack them down to each other once they were on the bird. So I'm using the tails that I cut off after I was done weaving in ends. And what I just did was I would go through a stitch on this feather and a stitch on this feather. and just go through there and then go back the other way through the next stitch then go back the other way through the stitches I just came to pull tight and then bind off and weave in those ends so they are just tacked together you can't really see that stitch and you because it's hidden underneath these top stitches and it doesn't go all the way through the bottom but it will hold them together so that they still have some life they can still wiggle but they will stay where you want them to be to make our wings alternate or look like they have alternating black and gray feathers I didn't want to do straight up stripes because it looked a little too clunky and geometric so instead we're going to hold gray and black together and we're going to make our wings with both of them held together so that the feathers look like they're black and gray, but they also take on kind of a helter-skelter look. We're going to have to go up a hook size, so I went up to my H hook. And we're going to chain two and work three SC into the first chain. Carry, making sure we're using both of those chunks of yarn with every stitch. This piece is worked in rows, so we're going to chain one and turn, and then work three SC back the other way. Like 
Oops. All right. Chain one and turn. And we're going to work an increase in the first stitch. Then an SC in the second stitch. And an increase in the third stitch. Chain one. And we're going to SC in each of those five stitches across. Chain one and turn. We have another increase round, so we're going to do, or uh, increase row. So we're going to increase in the first stitch, SC in the next three stitches, and increase in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Then we're going to work one stitch in each of those seven stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain one and turn. We're going to do another increase row. So increase in that first stitch. Work five stitches between. Two. Three, four, and five, and then an increase in the last stitch, chain one and turn. Now we're going to work five rows even with nine stitches in each row. So here's our first row, two, three, Four, whoops, five, six, goodness six, seven, eight, and nine. Then chain one and turn. And you're going to work four more rows back and forth even of nine stitches. We have five rows of nine stitches each now and we're going to start decreasing. So we're going to chain one and going to work a decrease in the for over the first two stitches and then work five SC's two three four Five, and then a decrease in the last two stitches. Chain one and turn, and we're going to work one SC in each of those seven stitches. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain one and turn. We're going to work a decrease in the first two stitches. Then work three SCs. Two, three, then work a decrease in the last two stitches. All right, and then chain one and turn. And we're going to work an SC in each of the five stitches in that row. Two, three, four, and five. So there's our wing all done. We're going to go ahead and pull those out, cut them off. And we need to make one more just like this so that we have two wings to attach. And I would go ahead, weave this end in, the pointy end in, 
and then leave both tails on this flat end. You may decide that you want to weave in one tail and only sew it on with uh, the other tail. Um, but I like to sew on heavy pieces like this with both tails so that I know that they get on there um, and attach well. Attaching the wings to our peacock is going to be relatively easy. It's a simple five stitches along the body. We're going to start at round 23. It's actually the increase round that does four SCs and an increase, four SCs and an increase. So that's how you're going to find that one. And then we're just going to work at a slant usually two over two stitches and down your five stitches because this is going to be five stitches long since our wing is five stitches long. I know these look like jumbo size stitches compared to these but it will work out even and I promise. So when we have this all nice and lined up here's our five stitches. So when we hold this here it's going to track along the body and kind of follow along his back and it will overlap your tail slightly like this. You just aren't going to be able to see it right this second because he's laying on his side and his tail is flopping over. So we're going to start out the same way we always do. In fact, I'm going to turn this guy around so this is super easy to see. Your wings don't have a right side or a wrong side so you can do this however you want um, in terms of which direction whether you show up or so down. Starting in our pin, we're going to go over one towards our other pin. Okay, and if you noticed, I chose to thread both of my strands of yarn from my tail through my needle. You can do it that way, or you can weave in one and sew with the other. I like to sew with both of them because then I know for sure I'm going to get a good attachment. Alright, and then come out at our other pin. The only downside to using both strands is sometimes you get a little stuck. Up through that last stitch. And like always, back down through the stitch we just came out of. And back over one to make sure we tie that end off nice and clean. There. Now I'm only going to attach the wings on one side. I don't really mind them flopping. Um, but if you want to, once you get his tail organized and he's not laying on his side, you can put the wing over the tail and tack this down right here. Just keep in mind his wings are always going to be over the top of his tail, not underneath. That's just how peacocks are put together. 